All right, so given this uh, start to a sequence puzzle where we have a clickable button, I think the next logical step is to make this into a series of four buttons to look like the classic Simon game. So recall that right now my uh, button is using the same transform as my whole actor that is the puzzle. Uh, what I want to be able to do is take this button and sort of have it spawn up in this quadrant, and then I'll make a three more that go around there. So uh, I'm going to do a lot of that in C++, so let's hop back over to Visual Studio. Um, so maybe the first thing to do here is say uh, how many buttons are there? Uh, I like this idea of having a constant here. Um, I guess it can be protected here. We'll call it a uh, number of options. It'll be int32 number of options. Um, so in our case, uh, that'll be four. Um, what's useful here is that we can look back at the source code and see how we can initialize that constant. So uh, one option here is in the constructor, we can say number of options, whoops, options is four. Um, but I want to introduce you to another notation that's really common in C++, and that is to put the uh, initializer up here. So this says that uh, as soon as we instantiate this object, we're going to take the number four and stick it into the number of options. Um, we could also do that here, uh, although that's less conventional, I think, for C++. We like to see that initialization happening in the constructor. Well, again, your, your mileage may vary, but this will be okay. Um, so given the number of options, that lets me do something kind of interesting here. Uh, in begin play, which is where we're currently spawning a single button, let's see, uh, let's get ourselves an array of colors. So we can say f linear color, colors, um, and we can use a array initializer syntax here to simply say we have red, let's see, oh, would that be green? blue, and let's go with uh, yellow. All right, so those are all of our colors. Um, now, in a loop, we can create multiple buttons. So we can do a standard for loop here. All right, so the trick I want to use here is that uh, we can conceive of, um, back over here, again, if we think about this as uh, being the origin, but we're going to use an offset, like we're going to push this button out here, then when we spawn it, we can give it a different transform that is, is translated by some amount off that way. Um, so that's going to be my overall approach here. So I'm going to make a vector inside the loop, no, outside the loop. Um, this will be a, just a regular old vector, um, three-dimensional vector, and we'll call it the offset vector. And I want to initialize it with some value, um, let's say 100. Uh, but really, maybe I want to parameterize that as well. Um, let me leave it at that for now. Uh, You know, uh, we could just try that as it is and see if that doesn't help us. Uh, let's go ahead and make a transform here. Um, sorry, that's a struct, so it's an F transform. And we can initialize that with our current transform. And then we can say uh, transform dot set location offset vector. All right, so we're getting the, the transform of this actor but then we're giving it this translation, which is, is this much off to the side. So now we can send that transform along instead of the actor's transform. And let's see. Um, now what we should expect to see is uh, four buttons and all of them are, are offset to the upper right. So let's, let's verify that before we get too much further into it. 
good. So remember, it used to be right in the middle here. Uh, also notice that, uh, let's see, get out of here, we can eject ourselves. So all of these things are happening in the same space, right? These, these four buttons, they're all different, um, but they're all overlapping each other in the same space. So that's pretty neat. We'll stop that and come back over here. So my idea now is uh, I want to rotate this offset vector by 90 degrees every time that I spawn a new button. So we'll make a, a rotator. Once again, it's a, a struct, so we see this F prefix on it. And I'll call this um, rotator is a fine name. And we're going to turn that 90 degrees along the, the X axis. I think that's right. Um, so after doing this spawn, we can take that offset vector and we can rotate it oops, by that rotator. So the rotate vector will actually return a new vector, um, so we'll just assign that back to that same local variable here. So if I've got that all set up right, that should handle the creation of the four buttons. Oops, but we do have to compile it because it is in C++. Okay, neat. Now, all of them are red, but we can fix that. Let's go back to the code. And uh, we've got this linear color array. So over here, we can set the color to be color sub i and that should fix the color. Um, while we're in here, I don't really like this as a constant, so, um, or sorry, as a literal, so I'm going to replace it with a, a variable, and we'll call it a distance from origin. That way we can reuse this here, and we'll just declare it up here as a protected field. Uh, that'll be a float, distance from origin, um, now, if I wanted to uh, edit that within Blueprints, I could make this a U property and say edit defaults only. Oops. And I can also make it a Blueprint read only, so Blueprints don't change it. Um, you know, a similar kind of thing I should probably do here. Um, because it doesn't make any sense for a Blueprint to modify that after the whole thing is created, right? So I might as well prevent that from happening. Um, however, we can also give it a default value up here. Um, I guess that, uh, whoops, origin, 100 is probably okay. Um, this starts to get a little bit ugly, so we can you know, reformat this a little bit. So we can see all of our initializers in one block there. Uh, good. Too much white space there. Um, okay, so let's compile that. And now let's see what we have. Look at that, four buttons, each one clickable, right? Each material is separate, and so we can set that highlight value. That looks pretty good. Um, if we think that's too far from each other, we should be able to go to the sequence puzzle. And find its distance from origin. Right, we can set that to, I don't know, 65? And now, without actually having to go back to the C++ code, get a change in behavior. Um, and you know, while I'm in here, I have this great desire to uh, bring my camera in a little bit. There. Doesn't that look nice? So, again, this, this idea that we, uh, we can put the default values in C++, but then expose them to blueprints so that, you know, our... our uh, level designer or just us when we're feeling like fiddling with the UI, we can get in and rapidly change these things without dropping into the C++. You know, that, that's really pretty cool. That's a, a really uh, powerful notion for thinking about how we structure our code. Um, so now that we have that working, I think the next step will be to actually make the puzzle itself. Um, but that'll require quite a few steps, so I'm going to save that for the next part of the video.